Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen, for part two of upgrading the fuel system in my early G37 370GT with a 350Z style fuel canister, which we're fitting with an Aeromotive 340 pump and fuel return system. So far, we've modified the fuel canister to accept the Aeromotive 340 pump and fitted the canister body with an inlet for fuel return. So in this episode, we'll go through the routing of the hoses for the fuel return system, positioning of the fuel pressure regulator, and wiring in a relay kit for the fuel pump to alleviate the problems associated with the factory wiring being a little bit undersized for a high power pump like this. So thanks for stopping by. Let's have a bit of a look. Fuel pump canister is back in the car and reconnected up. You can see the return line is positioned right there, snaking down beside the fuel tank. And we are ready to attack the wiring to fit the relay system to upgrade the power supply. What we'll do now though is we'll, we'll go and have a look at this return line and see where it comes up through the car underneath. We'll have a bit of a chat about how to get the damn thing through which isn't an easy job and uh, I'll just show you where it's been run. Firstly there's a plastic cover that you need to take off under the floor pan here. It covers all of your um all your fuel lines and whatnot along here. Now, right in the corner here, this is your fuel tank on the left and the floor pan on the right. All right, this is the area where the return line will need to be taken through. You just honestly need to find a place where you can get it through. It's really, really hard to do. So don't get frustrated and think, oh God, I can't get it. Because it does take time and just kind of working things around with your hands and pulling stuff. I tried a few different methods to get it through, uh, dropping wire down, trying to pull it through with uh, with like a draw wire. I ended up doing a variety of things to get it through. These pipes, these pipes here all come out up top as well, um, just in front of the fuel tank, and they get in the way substantially when you're trying to do it. So it's sort of a, a process of uh, manipulating these pipes out of the way, which I did actually wrap something around them and was pulling those one way so I could squeeze the pipe between it and also pulling and pushing the pipe at the same time to get it through and I found that I couldn't get it to come through in the position that I wanted it so what I had to do was get it through in the position that I could actually get it through and uh, once it was through I then had to uh, manipulate these Bundy tubes from up the top to then push the return hose in behind them and manipulate it around to get it into the right position that I wanted. It's not easy to do but you can do it. As you can see here I've done it. Uh, it did take a while like I said absolute pain in the ass but not that big a deal. Okay so once you get down to this point here you have to get around this corner. A little bit of a tight bend there but you know, that is what it is. Now, there is a spare hole in this plastic bracket that holds these other steel tubes in through here. It's really too small to hold the return line. I did force it in in this one section here because it was really the only place I could bring the hose through from here and I really had to put it in there. Other than that, I haven't used it just because it distorts the plastic bracket too much and it really doesn't sit well in there. So you can see I've come through this section here, I've gone in that little groove and then I've gone around in behind it. I've got a cable tie on there, another cable tie on there and then along here where it raises up I've used three 10 millimeter uh, stainless steel rubber line P-clips to get me along this sort of flat area of the run where I was able to do so. Other than that, like I say, I've just, I'm squashed in behind the other others and I'm cable tied to these um, to these pipes. Can't go anywhere. It's fixed in very well. Okay, where it comes through here, as we get close to the very front, there's quite a bridge in the chassis that we have to kind of get around. And even though this line has a plastic insulation layer over the stainless braid to protect it from wearing into things, I just slid a piece of fuel line and put it on there and then just cable tied it just to give a little bit of extra wear resistance to any points where there's a lot of stress and you know, a possibility of, um, of wearing either the, the tubing or you know, into the chassis. This kind of, this kind of setup, it's, it's the standard that you do whenever you're running pipes and tubes over stuff. You just cut a bit of, 
a bit of spare tubing or whatever, you know, insulate any hard bends and any rub areas in that fashion. Okay, so then it goes up. I've just snaked up with these tubes. These these two here branch off and go up in, in behind the guard, and then these three go up into the engine bay. So what I've done here, there was a plastic cover that clipped onto those two lines, and I've just basically run the return line in with those lines, and uh, because then the clips that held it on were only set up for two cables and it didn't really work i just cut them off on the back and then put some really heavy cable ties uh, back around the cover to secure them in position and to protect the lines once again this position here i need to get light and a camera in here and from that point on is where it sneaks up into the engine bay you can see the fuel return hose there i've put some heat sleeve over it because it's near the exhaust system uh, and that's where it ascends up into the engine bay from that point so we'll go and have a look up in the engine bay and uh, see where it comes out. So all of your cables come up roughly in this position here, just behind the throttle body on the driver's side. And also what comes up with it, one of the other hard lines that comes up in that same position is your main fuel feed. All right, this is your main fuel feed line. So it normally sits roughly in, in this position. It goes down there slightly. And what it does, you can just see down here. Okay, this is where your CJ Motorsports fitting goes on from here. <clears throat> the CJ Motorsports fitting actually replaces this unit here and also this fuel line here. So one of the lines, which is this guy here that comes in the CJ Motorsports uh, return kit, um, actually this line replaces this line here and then screws onto this fitting in the kit. So this is the uh, the quick disconnect fitting that's on the end of the fuel line. Uh, this is your fuel supply line to the fuel rails that comes up from the side there. It's a very similar fitting to what's on the fuel pump hat uh, in the back of the car that we've been working with previously, where you have to uh, press these two pieces in on the side to release it and then wiggle it off the fitting. Now you can only get one hand in that area, so it's impossible to squeeze these in together and wiggle it off at the same time. In the factory service manual, it, it, it talks about using a Nissan special tool, but uh, what I did was I got around that by I just got a just a crappy old spanner that came with some tool of some kind, which I, I keep and just throw into a box. They're quite handy just to grind up to make other things out of. You can see I've just opened it up slightly on the end. So what it does, you can basically push it in over these two fittings and it squeezes the, the tabs together and you can just, it'll just stay there by itself. And then you can use your hand that's in there to actually get the fitting off. So that's basically what has to happen. They have to squeeze together, but you can't get your hand in there to do it. So you need something to slide over the top with a bit of a taper that as you push it in, it's gonna squeeze them together. That's how, that was my solution around it anyway, and uh, it worked for me. It made getting the, the, the piece off very easy. Uh, like I say, it has this cover over it to begin with that, that sort of obscures this, so you have to uh, firstly remove that. It just clips off. There's nothing um, funky holding it on. So you just get that off, and it exposes the clip, and then you've got to squeeze the clip in. That line is then replaced buy a line in the CJ Motorsports kit. They have a special fitting that they make uh, to replace that quick disconnect. It's an AN style thing that just kind of clamps up underneath. Really, really nice piece of gear. And this is the pipe that actually replaces it. So your original fuel line comes up and into this point, and this is your OEM connection under here. Now, this is the only way that fuel uh, goes into your fuel rails. This one pipe splits off and, and feeds both fuel rails Fuel rails run along and then they're sealed off at the end like it's a complete deadhead system. So this is the one and only connection point to your fuel system. Now on the back of this fitting is your fitting that goes back to your fuel pressure regulator. So fuel pressure is regulated by bleeding off pressure into this line at the back of the fitting which then goes into your fuel pressure regulator there. So your return line hose, the one that we've put in there, that also snakes up in this position it has to connect into the bottom of your fuel pressure regulator. The bottom of your fuel pressure regulator is the output to your return to tank. So 
this connection in the back here goes into the side of the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, it then gets adjusted and regulated and then flown back out to the tank there. So as you can see here, I have a an electronic fuel pressure sender unit here, which is uh, connected via this cable to my uh, gauges that I have inside. And I'm also gonna be fitting a mechanical gauge at this point here, which will stay in there all the time. This whole section is hidden completely under my engine cover. So once the engine cover goes back on, it'll all look um, completely stock. You'll only just see the edge of the um, fuel pressure regulator up there. So as you can imagine, it's quite hard working down in this side here, getting your arms in there to um, manipulate these lines up through there. It's not that big a deal. It's not like trying to get the pipes up in around the, the return line up around the fuel tank um, before. So all I did was just drop this pipe out of here that connects the air filter to the throttle body. I just removed that. And once that's gone, that opens up quite a big area there to be able to get your arms in and around. Like I say, it's, it's not easy, but uh, it's not that big a deal. Where the hoses are run down in this section, because it is near the exhaust system, I do have heat sleeving over the, both the hoses that I've put in, just to be certain. And also because this will all be coming off when I start making and fitting the turbo manifolds. So, you know, it's going to be generating even more heat. So it's ideal to be just starting to heat sleeve stuff now. So that's pretty much the setup with the hoses and how the fuel return system works. So what I think we'll do now is head back into the wiring and start wiring up the fuel pump relay to bypass the anemic wiring that goes to your stock fuel pump, which are prone to cause problems in any kind of situation where you're running aftermarket pumps. They've just, time and time again, people have had big issues with it. Definitely a must if you put in an aftermarket fuel pump, you really have to run a relay and heavy duty wiring. So from here, we will move on to setting up the relay and going into the electrical side of that. Okay, time to start on the heavy duty fuel pump relay wiring harness, which we've got here from Deechworks. It's a pre-made loom. Very simple to make up yourself. I bought this just while I was buying a whole heap of other stuff. Um, like I say, really simple to make up yourself. Uh, I actually have all the components here in the shed to make it up. Probably a bit crazy that I bought it, but you guys can see how it all goes. All right, so you can see it's got a relay on here, just a standard automotive relay, 40 amps. That's a pretty reasonable relay. And it's fused on the end, just a standard uh, fuse holder. What do we got there? 25 amp fuse, you know, a little waterproof cover. Nothing particularly funky there. Uh, we're gonna have to cut this off anyway uh, to be able to feed the wire through to where we want to uh, get to the battery uh, I don't think I have a hole big enough that I can get this through. Anyway, I'm probably going to have to trim the length of the wire because uh, I don't want to just run heaps of wire around in there if there's excess. I want it all trimmed to length and properly integrated into the loom. I'll go and throw it out beside the car and see how length goes just laying it down on the floor. Looks like there is absolutely tons of wire, which is fantastic. So I'll just give you a bit of a squeeze at what's going on with my battery and everything. So you can see I've taken this surround off from around the battery and I've just taken part of the cowling here off. That just clips off really easily. I'm sure most of you guys are well aware of how to do that. Obviously everything on this is going to be mirror reverse on a G37 in the US, but the same principle, you'll get the idea. Now, because I have so much aftermarket wiring in here, all concealed, mind you, a special fitting that I've put onto the firewall to pass all my wires through rather than cutting into the rubber boot on the main loom here just so I'm not frigging around with the factory wiring and possibly um, upsetting the waterproof nature of everything. So I've created my own uh, connection. This white thing here, these four screws just come off and it's in two pieces and it's, it's a bit of a compression fitting. It's actually a marine fitting off a boat for bringing um, wires through a bulkhead. Very good quality um, fitting, stainless screws, completely waterproof. As I say, it compresses when you put it together and it closes in on all of the wires to give you a really neat fitting. So that's where I'll be bringing the power supply through. And we'll get this guy off. Like I say, it's in two halves. All this does is release the top section. The bottom piece doesn't come off. It's actually uh, has its own screwed on piece. It's sealed onto the body. Um, I think most boating places 
sell this type of thing. I've been putting them in cars for quite a number of years and find them to be very, very good for keeping water out. And uh, yeah, just a nice, neat way of getting all your wires through. There we have it. Let's pop our rubber grommet out of the middle, sliding back over these wires. And it's split so that you can just kind of split it and take it off. That's your, uh, that's your compression piece. Which leaves us a nice big hole to get wires through. I'll just uh, take the camera off. So yeah, that's the fit in there. As you saw, we just we just slid that off and pulled the rubber out. And as you can see, there's quite a big hole here to put a lot of wires through. And it just drops down straight into the cabin. That, that's the intake for your air conditioner and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that position right there, there's, there's nothing directly underneath it. You can drill through there. Obviously a good idea to check yourself first to make sure you're not going to drill into any air conditioner lines or anything like that. But uh, yeah, so just between there and the uh, main wiring loom top spot. <clears throat> so we'll go inside and um, have a bit of a look. I think I may have to take out the glove box and a couple of things. I've been in and out of that area quite a lot over the years for all those wires coming through. As I say, I think this is the, uh, the last wire for me to connect in that bunch. So... I'll probably wrap this when I'm finished. All right, I might just go and pull a bit of trim apart and we'll go and have a look inside. All right, so I've worked out roughly where I'm going to um, mount the relays. I'm gonna run them over in that corner over there near the, um, near the door to the fuel pump canister. So nice and close. We'll run the wiring along here. And then on the other side of the car, you can actually get through under here without pulling that bit of trim off. And that leads into this bit along here. So I've taken the plastic cover off on the sill. And what I'm going to do now is poke a bit of wire through from the back into that sill area. And I'm going to use that as a draw wire to pull some cable through. There you go. You can see I've just got a piece of wire going through there now. Very easy just to kind of poke it through. So I'll just take the end of this power wire onto the draw wire and pull it through. Okie doke, that pulled through pretty easy. You can see here, very, very easy to do. So before I get too much further, I might just slip a bit of convoluted tubing just down over that wire, just where I sort of can't see it and can't get to, uh, just for now, just to give it a bit of protection. Make it super easy for me so I don't have to worry about getting it in later Particularly in this blind area where we've just pushed through I can always join the convoluted tubing if I need to if the length I've cut isn't uh, isn't right But I'll slip some convoluted tubing on it. We'll see how we go. There you go folks. I've just slid a whole heap of uh, Just 10 mil. I think it would be 10 mil convoluted tubing onto a length of this wire now what I'm going to do I've pulled most of it through in this direction I'm just going to pull it back through and that'll bring the tubing with it filming stuff's hard I tell you anyway hopefully you can see it so what we'll do now is we'll just pull the pull the wire back and that'll bring the tubing with it and then we can just slide it willy nearly up the tube as we please to uh, to get us exactly what we want uh, slide it most of the way up here not sure if you could see that folks I had to drop the camera down but you can see the the convoluted tubing has now slid all the way up to the relay. So we can now position our relay where we want. And it already has tubing, which runs all the way through this blind section of the panel and finishes part of the way along this sill trim here. So if we want to, all we have to do is extend it slightly We'll get all that wiring tucked in and um, we'll see what we're left with here and how, much, how far we need to go with it. So for now, 
I'll uh, move into this area and we will mount the relay and uh, get all that set up. So hang on, I'll just change positions. So it looks like we have a small bolt, 10 mil, just behind this cable here, over that side, right there. So what I think I'll do is remove that 10 mil bolt, use that as the mounting and grounding position for the relay. So we'll get that bolt out, have a bit of a look at it and see if the hole in the top of the relay is large enough for the um, bolt thread to go through. And if not, we'll just enlarge that and we'll use that as our mounting point because it's hidden, it's underneath the, uh, the back quarter panel piece there. So it's nicely tucked away and protected. So we'll get that out and have a bit of a look. I must apologize for the quality of the filming in here. I'm, you know, it's always tough filming in the back of the car. I'm not a small person, I'm over six foot tall and it's very bloody cramped in the back of here. And uh, even getting lighting and everything sort of sucks a bit. But uh, so just bear with me folks, I do apologize if my filming is looking really shit. But uh, hopefully my explanation will make up for the lack of um, good visuals. So as I say, we'll pull that bolt out, have a bit of a look, see if we can use that to mount the relay, possibly remount the hole on the top of the relay. And as I say, we're going to use it for our earth point. So on the relay here, you'll notice it has a black wire coming out of it, which is your, your earth. Okay, that's an earth for the switch inside the relay. It's not an earth for the fuel pump. So what we have to do is, is cut through this wire, put a ring terminal on it, and mount it onto the back of our mounting position here. And what I will then do with the leftover wire that came with this setup, there's quite a bit of wire on the on the earth side of it. I'll put another ring terminal on that and I will mount both of them onto this post where we're putting the relay. And that second wire, uh, the one that I will able then be able to run back, it is what becomes the earth wire for the fuel pump. So the switched wire for the fuel pump is one of these guys. So we've got uh, one will be the switch into the relay and the other will be the output from the relay as you can see neither of these is an earth there's no use using the factory earth wire from the factory loom because it is just as uh, anemic as the power wire is so increasing the power wire uh, is only half the job you also have to increase the earth wire or the earth back to ground becomes the restriction so you don't get full advantage of the heavier power wire so as I say, I'll pull that bolt out, see if we can use it to mount the relay. If we can, I'll then cut this black wire, put the ring terminal on it, put it in behind, make another piece, and then uh, I'll go back from there because it's, it's very, very hard to film this crap as I'm doing it because there's nowhere to actually set the camera so you can see what I'm doing while I'm working. So I'll just turn the camera off. I will do that and I'll come back when I'm ready to mount the relay. Cheers, guys. Back at the bench, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ, it's good to be able to straighten up and get out of the back of the car, I tell ya. All right, let's try and sort this wire out. So, here is our wire. Here is my box of doodads. And we've got various terminals in here. We've got yellow ring terminals, uh, blue ring terminals, and red ring terminals, and I think I've also got oh yep, some bigger ones down in here. We've got some gold-plated ones. Very fancy. And I think that's about it for terminals. Oh yep, multiple fuse holders and stuff. So this is what I was saying, ladies and gentlemen. I have all the gear to bloody make this up myself. But mate, for you guys to show you how to one of the, to wire up one of these bought kits. Bloody worth it. Anything for YouTube. So let's get a bit of this cable stripped off and see which sort of ring terminal fits on the best. Alrighty, we'll just knock a bit off it. Uh, a little bit more. There we go. We'll grab a yellow one and a blue one. I'd say yellow is going to do it easy. Yep, no worries at all. My pick's the blue. But it's going to be a tight fit. Is it going to actually fit though? 
Got a couple of different blue ones. This one doesn't fit. I might be able to get a different one. Oh no, that'll go on. There we go. Fantastic. That's on there, ladies and gentlemen. Poking this little nose out just slightly so you know you've got your good engagement. All right, let's crimp that on. Right yo. Thank you, Doke, number one. Beautiful. All right, I'll just do the same thing to the wire that's hanging off the end of the relay, and we'll be good to go back in the car, no. Oh, one thing I didn't check is the bolt that we pulled out. It does actually fit in the relay, and uh, I didn't check the ring terminal, but it does fit very well with the ring terminal as well. So we're all go. We're all go, ladies and gentlemen. Back in the back of the car, folks. I've just untaped the fuel pump connector here. I've just sort of unwrapped the factory loom. That's our grommet that seals in the in the lid. Now you can see the issue here. If I can just sit this up somewhere, I'll show you the how anemic the wiring is. Now, going from the left hand side here, the blue is our positive to the fuel pump, which if you remember from the fuel pump housing here. The very outside wire was our positive and then the center wire, third one in, was our negative. So going off that, this light blue here and the black are our two fuel pump wires and they are actually considerably beefier than the rest of the wires just like on the other side of the, um, of the fuel pump housing. That being said, they are very, very tiny in comparison to our new wires. This is 14 AWG, which is what the, the Deechworks kit comes wired with. And I don't know if you can really tell there, but there is a massive difference. The, the core of the 14 AWG is probably nearly twice as thick as the old cable, including the outer insulation. So, I assume the old cable is probably something like 22 AWG, maybe even 28. It's just uh, no comparison as far as the size of the gauge. Hence the reason why we're doing all this, because this wiring is very light. Now, the problem is we need to get heavy wiring right into this connector. So what I think I might do, because if we just cut this and solder it, we're still going through a small section of the very light gauge wire. So what I think I'm going to need to do is to deep in this connector and see if I can actually um, solder some 14 AWG wire directly onto the pins that uh, I pull out of number one and number three. So we have uh, a direct feed rather than stepping down in cable size as we enter the connector. So I think I can deep in this connector and we'll have a bit of a look, see what I can come up with. All right, folks, I've come across my first gripe about the Deechworks kit, the input and output wires for the fuel pump that go to the relay are too short, they're less than a foot long. I doubt you're going to be able to get in and out of the wiring loom on any vehicle with cables that size. Your power wire is plenty long enough, your earth wire is probably too long, but that's fine. I'd, you'd rather be too long than too short, but these two little tails here, they're just a complete waste of time. You can see I've extended this one. I found some 14 AWG yellow cable in amongst all my stuff. If you are extending wires, it's always a good idea to use the same color and definitely use the same gauge, depending on what you're what you're doing, of course. So uh, yeah, fortunately I was able to find exactly the same gauge and color, which is really awesome. So I've just thrown about a meter on it. Uh, I've got a, a crimp on terminal on there. Crimp terminals are really awesome for extending uh, reasonably heavy duty cable. I find it um, a much better setup than soldering. I do solder a lot of stuff, but when you're uh, extending a, you know, something like a 14 AWG cable, you cannot beat crimp on terminals. It's what car manufacturers do in these kind of situations, and you know, it's just really is a great setup. So I'll slide some heat shrink over it, 
and it will be job done. Alternatively, you could just deep in the relay connector, um, you know, for the same result. But for me, this was easier. It's it's quite a simple thing. There's no dramas in doing it. So we'll just get that bit of heat shrink on there. And I'll extend this blue one as well, whether I deep in it or extend it like this. haven't decided yet, but I decided to have a look at all this sort of stuff and sort this all out. Because once this uh, relay is mounted into the car which it will be very shortly, it's going to be a pain in the bum to be able to do this kind of stuff with it in the car. It's a lot easier at the moment. I've just got it dropped out of the side of the car onto the ground. It's uh, Even though it's not, not as handy as being on the bench, it's certainly better than sitting in the back of the car. So we'll sort this blue one and, um, and we'll move on. So we're now ready to mount the relay, folks. All the, uh, the cables are here. We've got our ring terminal on. Off there, ready to go. We've got our negative to the pump wire, which has got a ring terminal on it as well. We've extended the uh, yellow and blue wires. That's where we are at. Oh, the only other thing that I, oh, you can't see it in there. I've also cleaned up the point where the bolt goes in just to get a better earth. The threads would probably give you a good enough earth anyway, but I've um, I've got a little tool in there and I've just scraped all the paint off where this where the relay's mounting and the earth connections are going. Just one of those things to make sure you've got a good connection. All right, I'll get this mounted off camera because it's just it's too awkward a position to mount it and hold the camera. It's hard enough with two hands, let alone one. So I'll mount the relay and I'll be and I'll be back. All right, our relay is mounted in position. All our earths are connected, earth from the relay, and we now have our output earth to the fuel pump. I've, uh, I'll just do a quick continuity check on the earths. Just got the multimeter there. I've got one end of it going to a, a wire that's mounted onto the uh, negative side of the battery. And there you go, we'll just hook him up. So we've got uh, great continuity there. Just something to rule out later if something's not working. You can say, well, I've done that. That's obviously not the problem. All right, so moving on from here, I guess it's about time to uh, attack the factory wiring loom. So here we are back at our factory fuel pump connector. Blue is our power wire to the pump, black is the earth to the pump. So basically, they're the two wires that we have to cut. So I'll just try and do that with one hand. So firstly, we will just snip both of these guys. Now... The black wire in the factory loom won't be reused. We'll just tape that up and fold it back into the loom. This light blue wire, this is our fuel pump uh, power supply, which becomes a trigger for the relay. So it basically gets connected into our new blue line, our new dark blue cable into the relay. Like I say, the black gets just folded away. And coming out of the relay, we have the heavy yellow wire and the uh, bl heavy black wire which screwed onto the, the back of the relay to the body with a ring terminal. So they take the place down here. God, I wish I had three hands and it would be so bloody handy. So yellow becomes blue and black becomes black. What we've got to do now is, is I'm going to try and pick open this factory connector, see if I can wire these in directly. And we also have to connect uh, our blue wire to the relay which is the trigger to the relay um, from this guy and uh, yeah we'll see how we go so this is the uh, the black wire that I just de-pinned out of the fuel pump connector so what I'm going to do is uh, basically just sort of cut the wire back open up the connector a bit and then I'm going to solder the black heavy duty fuel pump wire directly onto this connector because I, I don't have another one that I can crimp on and they're, they're not really designed to take a wire that large so we're better off to just solder it on but we've got to make a couple of preparations just before we do that which I will start doing right now.
So you can sort of see what we've done there. We've just opened up the back of the connector uh, and left a bit of copper wire there. Now, I'll just do a bit of a dummy setup on the bench because I actually have to go and do this at the car you know, because obviously the fuel pump setup's over in at the car. So basically what we're going to do is put the new wire into the top of here, fold these tabs back down around the wire right where it meets the insulation and then we are going to solder this bit here together and that will give us a very nice joint that uh, we don't actually have to be concerned with going through any amount of length of the standard small gauge wire so yes unfortunately I can't show you the soldering here on the bench I'll have to go and do it in the car which sucks to film but that is what I will do and then once it's done I'll, I'll slide some heat shrink up over it right away to the end before we push it in so it should be pretty good anyway bear with me I'll get it done and I'll give you a look okay so here we are back at the car this is the um, the end result after soldering yeah, we've just got to pop that back in the connector, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do and film at the same time. I'll pop it back in and I guess we'll have another look. And that's the result right there, ladies and gentlemen. You can see she's back in. Very, very fat looking cable compared to the rest of them. But as you can see, that is back in the home position you see it's our center pin doesn't look any different to any of the others we don't have the uh, the retaining clip is out at the moment we'll leave that until we've got uh, got the other one done but as you can see by doing this we're minimizing the chance of um, voltage drop or or anything by trying to connect onto just a tail from a, a from a wire like this of such a small gauge which I've seen so many people do with fuel pump installations I go to the effort of running a relay and then connecting to something like this which just kind of defeats the purpose to a certain extent it's obviously better than, than not running a relay at all and having direct power running to it but it's certainly not the optimal solution and as you saw with the fuel pump module, we have the pump directly wired into the other side of this connector. So we should have a very, very stout electrical connection between this setup and directly into the pump, which should be pretty much foolproof. So I'll get on and get this blue wire out and solder this uh, yellow guy straight onto it. There we go, there's our second one done. That's the yellow wire. Very hard to get a decent focus going on here though, folks. We'll just uh, pull the heat shrink back over it, which is sitting just here. Pull the heat shrink over the end and put it back in the factory connector. And there we go. We are looking good, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see if I can one-handedly slip the locking collar back in. This will be interesting. Nah, it's not going to happen. Alright, we'll see if I can perch the camera somewhere. Alright. Locking collar, connector. Where are we? Alright, we just go kind of in there like that. We push in. And that's it. All back to normal. Except with two dirty great mother effing wires in the back. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I just have to reconfigure the wiring harness in the way of throw a bit of protection on it, tape it up, get it back to looking OEM. And as soon as I finish doing that, I'll give you a look at the finished product. As you can see now, folks, the wiring's all tidied up and sleeved and taped up and cable tied. That's our, our connector for the, for the fuel tank. 
Ready to go. Grommets on there in the factory position. All we've got to do is just slip it through the uh, the metal cover when it's time. That'll sit down there uh, nice and as per OEM. That's our relay mounted up in under that under that back sort of quarter there. The cabling is all all kind of finished and it comes all the way back now here across to this side where it runs underneath and comes out right here again in this uh, door sill. So next thing to do is throw a bit more sleeving on it, sit it down in there and then get it back up under the dashboard and back it through into the engine bays. So that's it for me folks, it's 2am, I'm going to head in and get some sleep. Come back in the morning and uh, continue this. So, nighty night everyone. I'll see you in the morning. Morning folks, it's the next day. All happy and well slept. I've just extended the sleeving on our cable here that I'm about to run along the door sill. It's quite easy to get along the sills on your uh, G37, 370 GT here. They have these nice plastic spacer blocks which kind of lock your carpet in as well but they also have quite a large hole through them which makes it really simple to uh, run any extra wiring through there I'll just zoom down I've got the camera back on a tripod it's like bloody heaven I tell you and uh, I'll show you how easy it is to get into these to run stuff through the sills here like I say they have a big hole through them very easy just to run stuff through even the sleeving goes through nice and easy so basically you just you're just threading the holes really easy to do really really easy and the next one And one to go. Right up in there. And we are almost at the engine bay, ladies and gentlemen. Just a matter of then pulling these these holes in the carpet here and lock into these little pieces in the plastic there just pull the carpet back up lock them in and that is pretty much ready for the sill panel cover to go on so I'll just crawl in under the dash and get this fed up through the corner I have a, a pull wire in here already to get me up through the uh, the marine fitting out into the engine bay so I'll just feed that up through there and pull it through into the engine bay now and uh, I'll see you in the engine bay. So here you go ladies and gentlemen, we are through to the engine bay. I pulled that through with a draw wire that I put in there before. You're ready to basically just put that cap back down, put the rubber grommet in, seal that back up, and we can now um, get our connection here worked out. It's just a matter of cutting it back and putting the fuse back in. This is the full length of cable from the Deechworks kit, so there was um, you know, probably about a metre to spare of power cable to get us all the way to the fuel pump. So that's a that's a positive thing. At least they've um, they've given us plenty of cable there. So other than having to extend the input and output cables, uh, the Deechworks kit seems pretty good. So obviously to get this cable through anywhere, whether it's just a, a penetration in the boot of your um, of your main wiring loom, or whether you've created a an entry point yourself for aftermarket wiring you'll pretty much always need to cut off that uh, fuse holder because the other end is has got the relay connection which is is much larger other, other than this you could always de-pin the relay connector and uh, get it through and then you know click it back in which is a really really simple thing to do but you'd pretty much generally always always need to tidy up the length of cables Obviously in this case, you just don't want extra cable anywhere that you don't need it, you know. So your alternative, if you did de-pin it, you'd have then, you'd have the fuse on here and everything, which would make it about this long. And then it's like, well, what do you do with this cable? You could sort of curl it around under the back seat or tuck it around in the engine bay here somewhere. 
Nah, not having it, it's not the way to do stuff. Everything needs to be the correct length. So basically this will be just cut off here and then the connector put on onto the battery terminal. Speaking of which, these, these two uh, insulated looking things here, there's another one on the, on the negative side. These are for my uh, battery tender. So I have a CTEC battery charger that I uh, use to maintain the, the battery on this thing because it really doesn't get driven more than you know once a week, maybe once a fortnight. So it has to sit on a battery charger. So this just tucks down in the corner here and uh, then I can just leave the tail hanging out when I, when I use it to charge with. And as you can see, it's just wired up through. That's where it comes up through here. Held with a couple of cable ties, just run along the factory loom and onto your battery terminals. It's just a really easy, no fuss way of connecting your battery charger, your trickle charger, in to maintain your battery. So our next job, fit the inline fuse back on. Just one of Trevor's quick tips here, folks. I needed a ring terminal that would fit the cable, but also fit on the battery post where I planned on putting it. Now, I'll take you over and show you where I'm planning on putting it onto the uh, onto the positive side of the battery terminal. So where I'm gonna go, is I'm gonna go onto this guy here, because it's a direct connection to the main battery post. But the issue is that the blue terminals are what fits the wire gauge the best, but the hole isn't big enough to fit over that, that post. And also the outside of it isn't large enough and would would jam, would jam interfere with the nut as it went down. It doesn't look like it there, but it actually the outside of the nut will hit this edge here. And well, you know, I could have gotten by with it. I would have just had to file the center out. But what I do have here, is these red ones which are a perfect fit on the terminal the connector is far enough out that when the nut goes down it won't interfere with it but there is one problem I'll just go back to the bench and that problem is that it's way too large for this size wire as far as uh, the end of it so I'll just show you the one that I've done that's the same connector that's crimped on so how I managed to get that to crimp, if you just left it like that, there's no way you'd get a decent crimp on it. So what I've done, I've just used a Dremel and I've just cut the sides out of this uh, connector, both sides, cut that side, cut that side, cut about a third of it off I reckon. So what that does is that, that then gives you enough that you can then properly fold it over onto the wire without uh, these two pieces overlapping each other which really sucks in something like this so yeah you can see that's what's been done there it's just been it's been uh, cut down and then crimped and that is a really really good crimp on there like it's super super solid I've got these little rinky dink slide over duvalackies which uh Seem to be a bit shit in my opinion. I'll see if that'll actually shrink up if I put some heat onto it. Uh, if not, I might have to put a bit of heat shrink on there. We'll see. But yeah, so, and that will fit perfectly uh, onto that terminal on the battery post. So yeah, just thought I'd show you that. How to modify a ring terminal for a smaller gauge wire. I'll keep going. So that's that, folks. It's all heat shrunk and ready to go. Connector on there, fuse. That's our redone join there. It's been crimped. With heat shrink over it, just for curiosity's sake, this is the original join that was there underneath the heat shrink from Deechworks. You can see it's just a uh, nice little crimp on there, and I've basically just duplicated that with what I've done. I used a slightly different style of crimper, but basically, on heavy cable, that's the way to go. Really super simple and absolutely foolproof, I guess, as long as it's done properly. So we'll throw him on the battery terminal, and that is pretty much done. So it's all hooked up now. Bolt it on there, that's our fuse, all cable tied back together, the waterproof compression fitting is reassembled and the wiring has been finished off for the uh, electric fuel pressure sender, that's it running through there, joined up into those two remaining wires that are in here, runs across behind the firewall and comes out just over here, that's the um, fuel pressure sender mounted onto the regulator 
that's not uh, permanently in yet. The thread's a little bit average on that, so I've just got to um, run it through a through a die and just clean the thread up a little bit. But uh, yeah, so there's a hole drilled through the side here with a grommet, and then it passes through, runs behind, and over to the connectors that run into the um, into the setup inside. So now yeah, that's all done. I can put all this back together. Right here, folks. I'm back. Bit of a distraction there. The electronic sender fitting up the back here. It's mounted on the fuel pressure regulator. The thread was a little bit damaged in transit and I wasn't real keen on screwing a $15 metal fitting into a rather expensive aeromotive aluminium housing. So I had to recut the thread and I didn't have a 1 8 NPT die here in the Aussie shed. So I had to get one and wouldn't you know it, it got bloody damaged in the mail, all sorts of dramas. Had another one sent to me, finally here. I was able to finally repair the thread on that sender. Gauge is mounted here on the uh, on the CJ Motorsports fitting. So as of now, the whole fuel system's buttoned up and we're able to put some power to it and check it for leaks. You can see that's the gauge there that I've got uh, mounted on the front on the CJ Motorsports fitting. And then up the back there is our, uh, our electronic sender unit that had the damaged thread on it that caused me a bit of a time delay. So what I might do is just leave the camera on the mechanical gauge here and throw some power into the system and see if we get some fuel pressure. All right, bear with me, folks. I'll just go and hit the ignition. Okay, here we go. So there we go folks, fuel pressure and a clean start. We'll just run around and quickly check all the lines. As you can see from that folks, fuel pressure's a little bit high, so it's on about uh, maybe 58. I've just got to knock it back to 52, which is uh, factory fuel pressure, and then we should be good to go. So that's it about there now, as you can see folks. Looks around 52-ish on the mechanical gauge there. So what I'll do now, I'll just go in and check the electronic gauge. You guys can come with me and we'll see what that one's got to say for itself. So here we are folks in the car. So you can see we've got uh, fuel pressure on the left over here, 52. You can see all my uh, temperatures there. Got water, which is your radiator. Oil temperature two, which is the engine. Oil temperature three, which is the automatic transmission. Oil temperature four, which is the differential. And uh, we'll just go back to this page here. I can pull up four different senders on this particular gauge. And uh, I've got another gauge there that I can pull up any of the senders. Got two over here. And I have my uh, GFB GeForce 3 boost controller, which is doing nothing at the moment because there is no boost uh, sitting down under here. They're all pretty neat. These gauges are very thin, so they don't, uh, they're not an obvious thing that takes up any space. I'll just whip through this one, see if I can, because this brings it up, you'll bring up a couple more decimal points. See what we're doing. Here we go. All right, so that's saying it's going between 51.8 and 52.1. Uh, that's that's pretty close to me. I think I'm pretty bloody happy with that. Fantastic. All right, let's go back out to the motor. All right, folks, so the motor's off. I've just finished checking everything, the whole fuel system for leaks. There are no leaks. Everything works absolutely fantastic. You can hear the return line back at the fuel pump, how return of fuel into the, into the canister and into the tank. We're now set up for factory fuel pressure. Like I say, I'll give it a bit of a drive for a couple of days and just make sure everything's okay. 
and then I think I'm ready to start stripping the car off and start working on the turbo system. So once again, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. Always a pleasure to have you here with me. If you'd like to see more on my home-built twin turbo system for the VQ37, tune back in because there's going to be a whole heap more videos on the whole thing. Building turbo manifolds, you know, wiring up everything. Uh, mounting the inner cooler and you know just just the whole schmozzle even possibly with a bit of home up rev tuning because i will set this thing up and give it a rough tune here myself before it goes out onto the dyno i might just do a bit of a video when it comes time just to show you guys um how to scale up your injectors and all that kind of stuff but anyway thanks for watching the fuel system upgrade and uh yeah if you're interested i'll see you on the next one cheers <laughs>